Good morning, Mike and Arlen, our Philippine journey. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a very busy past couple of days. Hey, who's got a better educated woman? The Philippines or Thailand? I am sure there'll be a very different and obviously multifaceted response to the data. But I think it's something we should really talk about. I never got it what you had to go I guess this world's too slow for you I think there's beauty in the gray, the cold But you just want the gold And there's no way I can beat it Cause I got no chance, no chance When it comes to her She got the glitter and the fame And I, I just wasn't enough Okay, you know, you can't make this kind of a video without offending somebody. In fact, we're going to probably offend quite a few somebodies. But the numbers are what they are. Whether you want to agree with them or not, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. All right. Number two, hey, look, we put a lot of effort into this stuff. So, if you would, we would certainly be appreciative if you would subscribe and hit that thumbs up, especially the thumbs up because it will push it out for more people to see. Now, education in the Philippines, women, and where it stands compared to Thailand. Okay, why would this even matter? Okay, I will tell you why. This matters because you can't live as an island. If you're going to have a relationship, if you're going to try and have conversations with women, if you're going to do anything that interacts with anybody, their level uh, of ability to not just converse in English, all right, but to also understand and have a vocabulary and a general amount of knowledge matters. Uh, you just can't do it. I mean, I'm very grateful. I can talk to Arlen about just about anything uh, and at least get her opinion. And we bounce things off her heads and we discuss different things. But I digress. I apologize. So I think what's first and more important than anything is to recognize why Filipino women actually have a generally higher education level than Thai women. Okay. Okay. So we're going to put links below to where our information comes from, as we always do, or we always try. I think once in a while I forget. But either way, this particular study came out of Japan, out of their international, uh, one of their international think tanks. Um, and this opinion came from them. And it simply states, and you can read it, but what it really does state is that overall, because of the wide acceptance of women into higher positions, professions, academics, they actually are considered one of the most advanced in Southeast Asia. Now, we're not we're talking about actual education here. What we're talking about is, is that equality, that gender equality issue. But we're going to get on to the next part. Their summation very simply is, is that in the Philippines, Girls regard education higher than guys. Um, and it's because things are changing so much. All right. It's because they know they're going to have to drive themselves to a career. Now, there are exceptions to all rules. There are generalities in certain places. There are cultural issues. But that's the bottom line. All right. So where does it all start? And I would say this also, 
um, stick around to the end because we're going to talk about some things in the U.S. structure as well. But the difference between the old curriculum and the current curriculum in the Philippines, K through 12, all right, is that it is mandatory kindergarten through 12th grade. And they actually have to take a test. They have to pass. They have to do this. They have to do that. Now, we can all argue as to what the standard is and is it enforced and what it is. I mean, these are all arguments for different outshoots, but this is the basic premise, okay? And now you'll see these are all compulsory and mandatory. They must go to school and they must pass each section. And like I said, we can argue about all kinds of different things here, but that's just the way it is in the Philippines. So your basic education level is a bit standard to the U.S. In Thailand, they also offer grades 1 through 12 publicly. All right. And again, we are talking only about public school systems and data from the public school systems, not from the private systems. However, in Thailand, it's only mandatory for them to get through the ninth grade. Okay? That's it. At the end of the ninth grade, they're done if they want to be. And it looks a little bit like this. So you can see you have your, and these two charts are pretty much actually, the, these uh, color-coded uh, references are pretty much saying the same thing. You notice Thailand doesn't have compulsory kindergarten, starts at grade one. That puts children behind to begin with. Then you've got what they call Pratheon or elementary or first years or whatever. Then they've got Matayam, which is their secondary. And then they've got uh, vocational, which is uh, general academics and stuff. But you'll notice in the green, everything in the upper secondary education is not mandatory. None of that is. So now let's take this one step further. College graduates. All right, so... When you look at female college graduates, women that graduate from college, the percentage of women in the Philippines that go to college and actually graduate from college is considerably higher than in Thailand. Now, I can't give you answers as to why or how they come up with that, all right, but it is. And what they did was they went back and they look at all these professional associations. Um, I'll give you an example. Nurses, okay? Nurses in have a, a professional organization. Once you, not once you graduate from nursing school, you have to pass the NCLEX, all right? The national exam, which is widely accepted internationally including in the U.S. Only then can you belong there. In Thailand, there are currently approximately 175,000. Actually, you know what? About 179,000, I'm sorry, registered nurses. In the Philippines, the Professional Organization of Nurses of the Philippines, there are almost 1 million nurses that have passed the NCLEX, okay? Now, out of that number, a couple hundred thousand are non-practicing, and a good 350, 400,000 are actually practicing overseas. And everybody here knows just how high in demand Philippine nurses are, okay? The same applies with differences between pilots, engineers, 
and other professions, all right, um, it, it is just higher. So your odds of meeting a, a higher educated woman are better in the Philippines. Now, again, we can make allowances and we can make exceptions all day long. This is obvious, um, but it is what it is. So those are the numbers that are out there. Um, in nursing, 77% of all Filipino nurses are female. I couldn't get a number for Thailand, to be honest with you. I would imagine some similar, maybe maybe even higher in Thailand. I don't know. Okay? But either way, it doesn't come close to the 600, 700,000 that are actually practicing right there in the Philippines. Uh, and there's an expected shortage as well. Now, you know what? I think I'm going to save my rant about the U.S. Um, education system for another day, for a different video. My point here was only to get across for those of you that are looking at the different situations. Number one, it's important to be able to be with someone who has a reasonable amount of education and ability. Number two, the Philippines on paper certainly beats Thailand. And don't get me wrong, been to Thailand multiple times, spent a lot of time in Thailand, and even from personal experience, I find this to be what I thought it would before I even started this. So, I don't know. Your thoughts, your comments, how do you feel about it? Don't shoot the messenger. These are just the numbers that have come out. Thanks so much. We hope you have a great day.